I just want to say how happy I am to be here today. I, I think that this is a very important and productive um, use of our time. Productivity is what Jamaica needs right now. And so therefore, I think that this conference is timely, and I want to thank all of you for coming out here this morning, this early, to show your interest and your commitment towards the development of our wonderful nation. Mr. Chairman, members of the Cabinet and Parliament, permanent secretaries, members of the JPC Board, Nevita Anganu from the IDB, uh, Mr. Charles Douglas, Chief Executive Officer of the JPC, representatives of the Jamaica Confederation of Trade Unions, representatives of Jamaica Employers Federation, representatives of partner organizations, both public and private, overseas presenters, representatives of the media, specially invited guests, invited students, teachers, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if you were here last night, but it was a wonderful opening, and I thought that the productivity shown by the students was extraordinary, and there is their work. I don't know if you were here last night, but they came up with these posters, um, two of them from Anchovy High in Montego Bay, and one of them from, uh, I think, um, Green Pond, and they came first, I think the one in the middle is first prize, second, and third. And just look at the talent that we have in our nation. It is really something to behold. I'm delighted that the Ministry of Industry, Investment, and Commerce was invited to partner with the Jamaica Productivity Center to host this wonderful event. I'm also very honored to be invited to make the first presentation of the conference, and I am advised that my task is to set the tone for today. In particular, I am reminded that the theme of the conference is productivity, pathway to competitiveness and growth, while the sub-theme for today is driving productivity in goods and in services. For my part, I'm extremely pleased this morning to address this important gathering on the topic Productivity, Business Facilitation and Investments from Red Tape to Red Carpet. And we can all agree that in Jamaica, there is too much red tape. It is too difficult to do business. And I hear this over and over again. And for myself, as someone who has actually lived abroad for a long period of time and have returned, the red tape is stopping us from laying down the red carpet. Let me commend Dr. Charles Douglas and his team at the JPC for their commitment and persistence in working towards greater productivity consciousness in Jamaica. Indeed, productivity is a critical element if we are to realize Vision 2030, which envisages Jamaica as the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. And we can achieve this goal. Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller, in her contribution to the 2013 budget debate, stated, we have red taped, we have red -taped our economy into decline. Ladies and gentlemen, if we are to have any hope of moving our economy on a path of sustainable growth, we must cut the red tape and lay down the red carpet. While we have many accomplishments for which we can be proud, such as sports and music to name just two, we must face the fact that the Jamaican economy has underperformed over the past three decades. This underperformance has resulted in the overall economic environment becoming even more fragile and uncertain. One of the major factors that has stymied national productivity and economic growth in Jamaica is inefficient government bureaucracy, or what we refer to commonly as red tape. The 2013-2014 Global Competitiveness Report has singled out this issue as the most problematic factor affecting Jamaica's global competitiveness. Red tape was listed as one of the top three factors discouraging prospective businesses. 
I must highlight, however, that some improvements have been made in regard to the removal of red tape affecting the progress of business in Jamaica, but that there is much room for improvement. As highlighted in the 2013 Doing Business Report, we have made some improvements in reducing the difficulty experienced by businesses in paying taxes. In this respect, Jamaica moved up 11 places from 174th position out of 185 countries to 163rd position in the current fiscal year. So we are making some strides in some areas. We also continue to do well relative to other economies in terms of the ease of starting a business and dealing with construction permits, ranking 21 and 50, respectively. In comparison to Latin America and the rest of the Caribbean, the process to start a business in Jamaica is less cumbersome. In Jamaica, one has to follow a six-step procedure compared to nine steps in Latin American countries. It takes seven days to start a business compared to 53 days in the Latin American countries and 12 days in the OECD, and the cost to start a business is 6.7% of GDP per capita in Jamaica compared to 33.7% of GDP per capita in Latin American countries and 4.5% of GDP per capita in OECD countries. In terms of dealing with construction permits in Jamaica, there is an eight-step procedure to obtain construction permits relative to a 13-step procedure in LAC and 14 steps in OECD. In Latin America and the rest of the Caribbean, it takes 225 days to obtain construction permits compared to a much shorter time of 105 days in Jamaica. Also by way of comparison, the 105 days that pertain to Jamaica is just two days more than the 143 days it takes to obtain such permits in the OECD. On the downside, however, Jamaica performed relatively worse in most of the doing business indicators compared to last year's performance. Of course, this is not good news. The most striking deterioration in performance are in the areas of obtaining electricity, moving down 13 places, obtaining credit, slipping seven places, and facilitating trade across borders, moving down seven places. Jamaica was also ranked lower relative to last year in the areas of registering property, moving down one place, protecting investors, moving down three places, enforcing contracts, moving down one place, and resolving insolvency, slipping four places. Our country's performance is poorer when compared to the average performance in Latin America and the rest of the Caribbean in the areas of accessing credit, trading across borders, and enforcing contracts. Despite improvements in the process that businesses go through to pay, pay their taxes, it still remains the indicator for which Jamaica has scored the lowest relative to the other doing business indicators, <clears throat> ranking 163 out of 185 countries, obtaining electricity, 123, and enforcing contracts, 129, are the other two most problematic factors for doing business in Jamaica. Ladies and gentlemen, business facilitation is a core ingredient for sustained investments and for improved in national productivity and economic growth in Jamaica. It is important for the development of a strong entrepreneurial sector in our economy, which is crucial for job creation. And I want to say that our attitude is also very important because some investors have said to me, if they come to the airport and people aren't friendly, if people aren't encouraging, if it's nonchalance, you could come or go, they don't care. It's a bad impression to start. 
We have to start welcoming people right at the airport. And I'm talking about in the center of doing business, which is in Kingston. In Montego Bay, there is more friendliness, I think, towards people coming in as tourists. But also, we have to extend that same welcoming mat to those who are coming to the center of business, which is in Kingston. So I think we have to look at many areas for improvement, not just in terms of the um, actual statistics, but in terms of our attitude towards business and development. Joseph Schumpeter, a prominent economist noted for his work on entrepreneurship, makes the clear link among, among entrepreneurship, productivity, and economic growth. Schumpeter describes an entrepreneur as an innovator, one who finds more productive ways of doing things in order to drive economic growth. This process he calls creative destruction. Innovative entrepreneurs tend to introduce a new good or a new method of production, open a new market, discover a new source of supply, or reorganize an industry to yield maximum output. So of course, we have to have enthusiasm in whatever we do. We have to show that we believe in ourselves and that we believe that we can do it. And we can't wait for somebody else to do it and show us how it's done. We have to take our own initiative and try something new. Entrepreneurship, according to Schumpeter, is the key to innovation and technological change, which in turn is important for capital accumulation and economic growth. Even with this said, the fact is, we will never be able to unlock the full potential for growth from entrepreneurial development if we continue to make it difficult to do business in Jamaica. And I want to say something about the banking system as well. People have often complain to me how hard it is to open an account. My myself coming back, you know, from Canada coming here, I had to have two um, JPs sign, then other things I want to know. I, I think it's just too much. Because we cannot do business if the banking sector is not performing and is not also amenable to its customers. To significantly improve our global competitiveness and doing business ranking, we must cut the red tape. Red tape imposes additional and unnecessary costs on investors. Furthermore, it causes investors to develop poor perceptions of our business environment, thus discouraging them from investing in our country. A transition from red tape to red carpet cannot be accomplished without significant business reform. In that regard, the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce has proposed and is currently implementing a number of key reform initiatives to improve the business environment. These reforms and initiatives include a secure transaction regime, insolvency legislation, and amendments to the Trademarks and Copyright Acts. And we're also going to be signing the Madrid Protocol, which will give us in Jamaica the opportunity to register our patents and trademarks, not only here, but across the world in one go. The secure transaction regime will allow borrowers to pledge movable property as security for loans, resulting in improved access to credit, particularly for micro, small, and medium enterprises, otherwise known as MSMEs, and also for farmers, which is very important because we need to eat what we grow and grow what we eat, and we need to grow more. And I think the farmers deserve some assistance in this regard. Modernizing our insolvency legislation will encourage more businesses to restart after failure and ensure that those whose failure was honest 
are not stigmatized. And of course, this is comparable to Chapter 11 in the United States of America, where if you file for bankruptcy, you, are, you can be exonerated um, after certain procedures and after a certain amount of time, and you can go back into business. Amendments to the Trademarks and Copyright Acts will increase investor protection and facilitate greater flow of investments into high-tech industries. As a major step towards eliminating red tape, what we call the super form will be introduced during this fiscal year. This super form will consolidate applications from five different government agencies, so you don't have to be running from one place to the next, which I know is a great source of discontentment, thus reducing the length of time it takes to process requests. Further, the cabinet through the infrastructure subcommittee is working to eliminate delays in the implementation of government projects. The aim is to reduce the time taken from announcement of requests for proposals, the RFP, to the award of contracts from two years to 120 days. Two years is far too long. You cannot do business in that length of time. Leadership and change management training sessions, as well as productivity training workshops, are also being conducted within the ministries. The aim is to increase the competence level of public officers who are also being assessed on an individual basis and redeployed if their skill set and qualifications are found suitable for other positions. The worst thing is to have the wrong people in the wrong job. Sometimes people are not suited in their positions, but they're suited elsewhere. And it's our job to make sure that the right people are in the right positions to serve you better. The aim of the public sector transformation thrust is to achieve an open and impartial public sector which puts the public's interests first. We are moving towards a public sector in which valued and respected professionals deliver high quality services efficiently and effectively. The hope is that the public sector reform will remove inefficient government bureaucracy through the elimination of corruption, an increase in the competence level of public officers, the re-engineering of business processes, and the inducement of technological improvements. For this fiscal year, Jamaica received very low marks for most of the public sector indicators. Jamaica ranked more than 100 out of 148 countries on the following indicators in increasing order. Ethical behavior of firms, 103 out of 148. So it's not just government, it's everybody. Strengthening of auditing and reporting standards, 110 out of 148. Favoritism in decisions of government officials, 126 out of 148, which is pretty bad. Protection of minority shareholders' interests, 133 out of 148. Efficiency of the legal framework in challenging regulations, 134 out of 148. It must be improved. Organized crime, 134 out of 148. Efficiency or efficacy of corporate boards, 137 out of 148. Wastefulness of government spending, 139 out of 148. Public trust in politicians, 140 out of 148. Transparency of government policymaking, 140 out of 148. Efficiency of legal framework in settling disputes, 145 out of 148 and burden of government regulation, which received the lowest ranking, 146 out of 148 countries. You see why we need this productivity seminar? It's very important that we look at all of the facts and that we correct them. We have to look at ourselves and we have to self-examine and we have to make improvements. On a positive note, we have started to witness the power of public sector transformation process through improvements made by Jamaica Customs to create a more conducive business environment. 
the implementation of an electronic data exchange system currently being used in 85 countries is underway to further improve efficiency within Jamaica Customs. This data exchange system will allow for real-time communication between customs and traders. An introduction of the port community system will facilitate the integration of commercial and logistics activities among companies involved in import and export, export processes, as well as initiatives to stem revenue leakage and eliminate smuggling. Jamaica has been doing generally well in attracting foreign direct investments, or FDIs. With plans underway to make our country more business friendly and to increase our relative competitiveness, it is expected that FDIs will increase. JAMPRO, which is in our ministry, has been mandated to accelerate its efforts to promote investments and business in those sectors of the economy that stand to give us the greatest growth, namely logistics, manufacturing, and agro-processing, ICT, KPO, business process outsourcing, medical tourism, creative industries, and energy, and mining. Emphasis is being placed on the ICT BPO sector as it is recognized as one of the fastest generators of employment. The goal is to double the existing capacity and employment generation within the sector. The challenge the country faces with regards to FDI is the inability to realize the spillover effects to national productivity and economic growth. To strengthen our absorptive capacity for FDI, substantial investments will be made in human capital as well. Therefore, our ministry is currently working closely with Hart NTA and our tertiary institutions to train the workforce needed to operationalize and take advantage of the many jobs being created through foreign direct investments. And I must say, when the logistics hub is an actual reality, we will need persons and young persons trained in logistics and many other areas because this will definitely change the face of our nation. And we need to prepare our young people and our people to be able to take advantage of those opportunities. Specific policy measures will be implemented to ensure that MSME entrepreneurs are included in the economic zones and that they become an integral part of the global value chain. So in other words, we have to step up our productivity, not only to our own standards in Jamaica, but to world standards. Formation of synergies between domestic and foreign investors is important for the achievement of sustainable economic growth. It will also prove prudent for us to take advantage of foreign direct investment to improve productivity in our domestic industries. This is a way to facilitate increased forward and backward linkages and to stem the leakage of FDI-generated income out of the country. We want to make sure that when persons come to invest, that the dollars stay in Jamaica and benefit the Jamaican people and the Jamaican economy. And we must make sure that that happens. Studies have also shown that we can maximize the multiply effects of national productivity and economic growth through licensings, strengthening our vertical linkages, and investing in research and development. In addition, we continue our efforts to, top it, or to tap into the world's expanding animation industry. I don't know if a lot of you heard about Kingstone, but this was an event that was held at the UWI, supported by the World Bank, where animators came from across the world and judged some of our young people as animators. And they were amazed. I saw what they put out. It is amazing the talent that we have here. We just need the open doors of opportunity. Jamaica's first multifunctional animation studio has already been launched and is receiving major support <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> from the international animation firm Toon Boom Animation. 
In the joined up government faction or fashion, we continue to work with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade to use economic diplomacy to access new markets and to facilitate strategic alliances and joint ventures in light of the rapid disappearance of trade preferences. It has now become absolutely necessary for us to find new and creative ways to improve our competitiveness within the global markets. In other words, we're not being cushioned anymore. We are being told that we are a middle-income country. We're not getting the preferential treatment that we normally get. We have to step up our act so that we can compete on the world sphere. And that's what the world is expecting of Jamaica. And we can do it. We have Usain Bolt who has done it. We have all other athletes who have done it. We have persons who have done it in the music. It's time to do it in economics and fiscal responsibility. It's time to do it in productivity for Jamaica. Ladies and gentlemen, the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce has put forward well thought out plans, but none will be sufficiently effective if we do not work together to cut the red tape and it's lay in its place the red carpet. I cannot stress enough that moving from red tape to red carpet through public sector reform is crucial for business facilitation and for generating a significant increase in FDI and private domestic investments. Ladies and gentlemen, let us embrace the vision of becoming a productivity conscious and therefore productive nation. Let us commit ourselves to doing what we can to improve the business processes of our organizations, as well as to raise our individual levels of productivity. It is on each one of us, it is incumbent on each of us to take responsibility for this. I implore you to lend your support and to share your ideas with agents working tirelessly to put our country on a sustainable growth trajectory by 2030. Ladies and gentlemen, it will take a renewed effort and persistence to break the poverty cycle, which I believe must be broken in Jamaica, and to increase the standard of living for all Jamaicans. But it is certainly possible. Let us join hands and hearts in concretizing this national vision. I thank you, and may God bless you, and God bless Jamaica.